Let's talk about the last bit, the exciting bits, at least to me, because I like hardware. People cheered in the crowd so loudly. People got pretty hyped for these. Yeah. We got a new Pixel tablet and a new Pixel folding tablet called the Pixel Fold. Nice. I don't know. I don't like the way I said that, but we'll just keep it in. Folding it's a phone. folding phone. New fold and the new tablet. Becomes a tablet. Okay. So very different uh, in the spectrum of price. I guess we'll start with... Uh, tablet. No, I like, I like... Let's do the fold first. Okay. Because the fold is wild. The fold is a very confusing, conflicting product to me because I really like it and want it. And I also know that I will not be recommending this to most people. Pretty Point. fair. <laughs> Sounds right? evergreen for all our <laughs> folding. <laughs> okay, so well, it's a pixel, but like even multiplied. So it is $1,800. And so when you come in at that price, you immediately attract the early adopter and the enthusiast who both care a lot about what? Design, aesthetics, incredible specs and performance. And New what does technology. this phone have? Tensor G2 from seven months ago and not the best looking bezels. Yeah. So it's not going to appeal to the $1,800 phone buyer, but I really like the pixel stuff about it. Right. And it has all of that stuff still, but now it's a seven and a half inch screen in the inside that unfolds. And I've been waiting for this sort of passport size thing. And the decision they made, when you can see this in the impressions video, is they moved a lot of the, the folding hardware to like above and below the hinge mm. in order to keep it thin. Mm. So it's a 180 degree fold, but it's thinner than any other foldable I've ever used. In the US, other than the Xiaomi the foldable. And the Surface Duo. Oh. But that's not a folding screen, so I don't count that's that. That's not a phone. Oh, right. <laughs> it's not a phone, Fair it's enough. a Surface. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> but it is a really thin, really nice to hold tablet, pa passport sized tablet thing. Mm -hmm. And so I really like it, and I'm gonna definitely, tr I'm gonna get one, and I'm gonna review it and see what it's like, but I also know that at 1800 bucks, you should probably just get the Fold 4 from Samsung, like that's the better phone for most people um that's you probably get three that's pixel one. sevens for that price yeah you could also get <laughs> other phones so yeah that's it's out what do you what do you guys think now that you've seen it so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i actually i don't know i the the hardware is really nice i'm really glad they have really nice hardware first generation google hardware can be very rough the cool thing is I know that they've been working on foldable interfaces for a very long time. Basically, ever since the first Galaxy Fold came out, Google's been working super tightly with Samsung to like make foldable interfaces really... like They had Android 12L, yeah. and the L just meant large. Mm -hmm. Large screen displays, a.k.a. foldables. So now we're on Tablets. Android 14 is about, about to come out, yeah. and they've been working on this for a long time. They showed a lot of like multitasking modes that seemed really natural. They have the new... Uh, multitasking bar that you can slide up with, that which Samsung fire. already has. Samsung already had that, but it was in a permanent dock at right. the bottom of the screen. This, this goes one away. It comes up from the multitasking bar. Yeah. I thought it was fire. Yeah. I like that a lot. Yeah. The, the bezels do seem a little rough. I understand that you need bezels of some kind to be able to hold a foldable. Put a real webcam in there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Real selfie camera. Real selfie camera. Instead of the garbage that's under the screen of the Samsung. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. I will say that they didn't really hide the hinge in between the bezels very well. And it looks a little more rough than like the Galaxy Fold 4. You're saying the crease? The, uh, not the crease, Above but like the screen. Oh, oh, where the two okay. pieces yeah. like kind of touch each other. Okay. And then there's the screen that floats on top. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it does. It looks a little bit rough when you open it. Um, But we'll... I want to I want to try it more. I want to try it yeah. more. Uh, so we'll see. I, I think that you're definitely spot on. That like, I have I've wanted a foldable for a long time, but I don't love Samsung's UI. I always love the Pixel UI. Yeah. So having something that has both is really amazing, and I like that it's in more of the Oppo Find N form factor. Oh, yeah. So the candy bar. Thing. Yeah. Because the yeah. candy bar from Samsung. Is, do you remember the first generation? Yeah, it was fold? A funny. Looking back at that phone. Oh my god. I gave that kind of an easy time like i was like wow guys it folds like can we you literally bezel, it folds it. but now that i look back at it i'm like whoa the <laughs> the inner display of the first fold that was like yeah. one eighth the size of the actual phone it's was like ridiculous sliver. yeah so yeah i'm, I'm pretty excited about it. i do want to try it i know that a lot of the people at the office are like gonna pre-order it mm -hmm. you get a free pixel watch if you pre-order it Gotta which is hilarious door. Yeah. i I know that the Pixel Watch has been selling really well. I think they released a stat, well, comparatively, they released a stat that it's like the best selling Android wearable or something, or Wear OS wearable. I can't believe it. That's a very high bar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think that they're, 
I think that they're just trying to move people into the Google everything ecosystem. For so sure. if you if you just don't have a smartwatch yet and you're buying a Pixel Fold, they're like, we're gonna get one on your wrist and you're gonna be in the Pixel Watch ecosystem Who for the rest of the time. Who is that person that doesn't have? Ah, uh, it's <laughs> weird because yeah, eighteen hundred dollars yeah. and is gonna drop it on a Pixel Fold, but somehow doesn't already have the Pixel a smart watch. or exactly. a smartwatch. Yeah, in general, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I don't know. Um. Funny enough, I think you could, you have your choice of the LTE or the Wi-Fi only version, and the LTE one's fifty dollars more expensive. So I don't know why they're giving you the option. Uh, they're both yeah. free. You just yeah. take whatever one you want. Yeah. The, so the full seems cool. I I really I think all of us in the office are probably going to try it for a little bit and then see how we like it. So. Um, I loved it. I mean, I played with it for like forty minutes, and I was like, wow, this it's one hundred twenty hertz on the outside and the inside. Yeah. It was smooth. And I think, t- like, to your point, like, a lot of people look at the bezels when they aren't using the phone and they look kind of weird. But yeah. then w- once you actually use the phone and you're looking at the screen, that's the important part. Mm-hmm. And I feel like when I look at the screens now, I'm more willing to forgive, like, a slightly thicker bezel. Yeah. Because I'm looking at the screen. The screen's nice. Yeah. So if if I can deal with the Pixel 3 XL, like, bathtub notch, I think I can <laughs> get away that, with that. Yeah. 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 Like, be fine. this whole thing... You know, I came into this thinking it's a foldable. I'm not really that interested in foldables. And then I left it thinking, like, I really want to try that. I think I really do want to try it. Um, There are some really cool things about it. Like you said, some of the software was really neat. I really liked the... um, I liked how if you are multitasking on both screens and then you swipe into recent apps, it'll stay docked together with the multitasking things that you're using. So you can go back if you're in, like... Google or like a video and messages like that'll stay together when you bring it back later um, or like sheets and your Gmail email or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I thought that was really neat. Um, they showed off, which I thought was pretty cool. The like live translation where you flip the whole thing open and you can speak into one side seeing your translation and then the other <laughs> side where someone's looking at, you can see yeah, that. That's I know that's like a weird, like it's kind of strange, but it also is way better than the like, I've I've seen a lot of people mention this, like they say they can go to foreign countries and actually oh, yeah. be able to to communicate with people, but that's talk into it, look at it, show it to them. Yeah. At least you kind of have some sort of like a little quicker back and forth. We were like, memeing this a little bit, like the lady in the demo was sort of like, here, here, look at it, look at it. <laughs> yeah. I thought what they were going to do is because when you fold it open, it's such a big display, I thought it would split the screen in half and on one side it would read the text towards you and on the other side it would read oh, towards them so if you were like si- if you were like sitting at a table across from somebody you could both be looking down at it and it would like talk into it and translate yeah. it i think they're liking the screen on the other side yeah Google i think they were just trying to flex that. That. google translate is one of those apps where every time i see an improvement of it i'm like damn that's good and then i never use it Uh-oh. i wasn't when i was in colombia the entire time we're like we need someone who speaks good spanish because We're not using our apps very well, but it has a feature where like you can say something in English, it'll immediately transcribe it, hit play, and it'll say it in Spanish. Yeah. Like out loud. Yeah. It's like, that would have been really useful in a taxi or something like that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to like be in the front seat of the taxi, like talking to the phone and like showing them the screen. Yeah. But the audio experience is nice, but it was cool. The next big step of that is now that we have um, audio AI and there's some products that can do this already where you just, you say like, I think Humane had this in their demo. (laughs) Oh God. Um, however that ends up looking, but like where you can say something into it, say, translate this for me. And then in your voice, it says it in the language, uh, like mm-hmm. the other language, which yeah. will be really cool. Um, do you have any other thoughts on the tablet? Not I, I mean, uh, the, uh, the <laughs> yeah, I've got Same some thing? thoughts the on the fold? tablets. We'll get to it in a minute. Yeah, but, yeah. Um, I think I liked the pixel fold way more than I thought I would. I definitely am going to try it out at some point. I don't think I'll pre-order it necessarily um because i you don't want that um, pixel watch <laughs> <laughs> yes i just need another pixel watch attempting to connect to my phone at all <laughs> hours of the office um yeah yeah i i think it looks really cool i'm excited to try it the thing is is like if you haven't used a foldable can you drop 1800 dollars without knowing you're gonna enjoy using a foldable all the time Oops. it does it does seem thinner so ultimately it does seem like the normal phone function should be fine, which I know is good, but then am I just paying three times as much money f- that I'm never going to open it up? We'll yeah. see. I, w- I would like to try. I'm more excited now than I was before. I think I tried to curb my own hype and then saw... Curb your enthusiasm. Yeah, that's saw smart. fancy... I got totally sold by the fancy presentation of it. and uh, There are also a bunch of other question marks with it that we're, we have to figure out in the review. One is 
It's still Tensor G2, and it is a smaller battery. It is the biggest battery in a foldable, but it is still a 4400 or something like that. And Tensor G2 has not traditionally been super battery efficient. And it's a gigantic unfolding screen on the inside. Yeah. So what's the battery life going to be like? That's number one. We don't know. Number two is it is thinner than the regular Pixel, so it is, yet again, a new set of camera sensors. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. There are slightly thinner modules and they had to make a slightly thinner periscope lens and all these things are all slightly smaller than the mm -hmm. flagship pixel 7 pro yeah so we'll have to again see what those cameras do samsung has done that in their folds too their folds always have slightly lesser less. cameras than their most recent flagships exactly yeah. so we're gonna have to test those um and then that's just it's just the apps question of like they did like there's 50 new updated Google apps for, you know, optimizing for the tablet screen size and hopefully a bunch of new third-party apps that work really well with it too. The different column sizes and all that, we'll have to play with that. That's a question mark. Uh, but then just like performance, you know, Tensor G2 holding up over time, Android 14, all that fun stuff. We'll see. I am fairly optimistic about battery life because I think that like the reason that this phone is so thin is I think that they want to encourage people to feel okay using it closed. Mm -hmm. When you only need to use it as a closed phone, you just use the front display, which is also 120 hertz. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a you know it's a glass screen instead of sort of that plastic kind of thing. Yeah. And so if you're able to, if it's about the same thickness as a Pixel Seven, and then you're using it as a regular phone, but it has a way bigger battery, that's kind of dope. And then you just open it when you need to, when you want to use expanded app features. Yeah. So I'm optimistic because I think that for with a lot of foldables, a lot of people kind of just open it for the novelty and use apps in big screen mode for the novelty, but they don't actually need to. So the more that it can feel like a regular phone most of the time, and then you have the convenience of the tablet when you need it, I think that that's kind of the ultimate in between. Yeah. Yeah. It'll depend on the ratio of how much you use outside versus the inside. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. I like All right. that. On to the main events. The main event, the Pixel tablet, ladies and gentlemen, it is a real thing. I wish I could hear the sound effects. What did you hear? <laughs> I did it at the same time. David did. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so Pixel tablet uh, gets unveiled. It is what we thought it was, which is it's a tablet <laughs> that connects to a speaker magnet dock that makes it a Google Home. The things that we didn't know that we now know are, one, it's a... Uh, Tensor G2, it's an 11 inch 60 hertz LCD. It's not a super high end tablet. And the price will be $499. And it will include, David, you want to, I'm sure you would love to remind <laughs> us of our bet, but it will include the dock in the box. Yeah, we've been uh, we've been talking about this off camera pretty much all day. I had to remind them very We've very been time. talking about Get it. it. So, yeah, Get I think the one person's been talking about it a yeah. lot more. Yeah, than this the is others. our bet was whether or not it came with the dock included. It does, which is dope. You yep. can also buy an additional dock for $129. Oh, I missed that. You can buy an additional Yes, you dock. can buy an additional okay. dock. I think it's a little bit weird to buy an additional dock and then just have just a speaker dock sitting somewhere that you can't use unless you throw the tablet on it mm. yeah um that's kind of strange i but i mean if you just want to buy it i like the, op the options there which is nice yeah because you could like put it in a corner or something and it, it's felt so it kind of blends in with your environment it would have been nice if the dock had its own like, bluetooth connection or just like a google assistant thing built in so yeah so ask it stuff from across the you room. could still play music on it without having to have the that's a yeah. good point yeah but it doesn't so there are there are pins on the dock and those four pins match up to the four pins on the back of the tablet and when you connect them those pins are everything that's data and power so if you, ch actually, it's how you charge the tablet. You yeah. put it on the dock. There's a USB-C port. There too. is a port, mm -hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't come with a USB-C cable. No. So you'll have to charge it on the dock. And then the other thing is, uh, yeah, it's got a speaker built into the tablet. So if you're playing music and you want that like slightly louder speaker, which I've listened to it a little bit, it's louder, but it's not that loud. Mm. We'll test it more. You put it on the speaker dock and then now it's a Google Home. It's got hub mode. You lock it, and it will go into hub mode and do all the hub mode stuff. So that was cool. You want to bring that yeah, up? Yeah, I, I think hub mode was the thing that we're kind of learning about this that really, like, showed how this thing is really neat. And how, yeah. like, what hub mode is is essentially when it's docked, that makes it, you know, feel like a Nest Hub. You have, like, home controls. You have, like, yeah. easy voice-to-text, like, stuff on that makes it super easy. But when you want it to be in the tablet mode, you either pull it off or use the fingerprint sensor, and then you're going into regular Google Apps and stuff, yeah, stuff like that. It. 
Mm -hmm. I'm curious if you can have multiple users fingerprints preloaded so that if you have a different set of apps as me, as I would have, I think that's exactly what it does. I know they mentioned multi-user. I forget if it does that where it sets you up per fingerprint or if it's just multiple fingerprints can unlock it to go to your... Because Android has multi-user built in. I do think they said logins. Yeah, I think it's two completely different users. That's dope. Which the iPad hasn't had forever. And the way they showed it on stage, which is new, but we haven't seen it in action yet, is like there's a little picture in the corner and you just tap the picture. Because like a tablet that's at home is floating around your house. Exactly, like maybe yeah. you and someone else uses it. You tap the picture and then it sort of brings you to the login screen. You tap your new picture, log in with your fingerprint, and it's a new tablet. New apps, new home screen, new everything. So I would want to get the one with more storage to make sure this would work well. But I think that's the best implementation of multi-user on a tablet we've ever seen yeah pretty if you can just touch your fingerprint to it and it's like this is david's tablet it's Mm -hmm. got all david's apps on it and then i dock it and then later on andrew comes in because he's hanging out at my house for some reason yeah and he logs into your tablet it's like the new spare key it's like you give them access to uh yeah yeah, exactly it's a spare key it's access (laughs) to your tablet yeah so i mean that would be that would be awesome. Yeah. That way your kids aren't like messing around with your bank account and stuff. They're not buying yeah, apps exactly. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And buying apps on your account. Yeah. So I think that that seems to be working or it, it seems to be the way it's going to work. I don't, well, I don't personally need one because I have a tablet already and I have a Google Home already. <laughs> so obviously I don't need it. But there's going to be a lot of people who don't have either and who can get this and it will be both. And I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. It's like a dual purpose thing. You lock it. It's. I'm curious how one-to-one feature parity it is with just buying a google home which is like 230 bucks can it be your nest security camera can it probably because the one that's plugged in all the time can but if it's just going to be popping off the dock i don't know if that's going to be a feature probably in hub mode i would guess in hub mode i'm assuming hub mode's gonna have exactly that everything that a nest home hub has i hope so in different i think it's even they were showing also an overhaul of your of Google Home, the new app, which finally. looked really good on tablet mode, like with all the different sliders yeah. and everything. So I think that's going to be fantastic on it. And that's what like that's what I'm so excited about this. Five hundred dollars, I can have my my Nest Hub Home that has all my home controls in a like my living room or something like that. Mm-hmm. And then when I travel to the West Coast to make a podcast in a hotel room, I can be an iPad kid on the plane <laughs> and just watch <laughs> downloaded Netflix anime or movies or whatever I want on there. So like, Play that's all I want this for. Claire is at home with no home controls now. <laughs> Claire, Claire will live. <laughs> <laughs> she has her but, pixel, right? So she can just... Yeah, that's fair, yeah. yeah. But yeah, so like that's... 500 bucks, I think that's great. I hate, I kind of want two of them. I kind of want one for my kitchen as well, where I can pull the tablet off to the side and for bring cooking. it with me if I'm cooking something and I'm like, you ain't get two dots. Difference. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. It'd be kind of ugly. One dock, two get tablets. Two docks. I don't want, what? Well, two. you're saying you want two tablets? I want two no. of these. But one with dock. dock. Oh, they no. come with docks. Okay. I, I would put them one in the kitchen with the dock, one in my living room with the dock. Huh. No. Also, just say, the green. I have green paint in my living room. This oh, yeah. We should also mention fantastic. there's three colors. Yeah. There's like a dark green, which is the only one that comes with black bezels. And then there's like a sea foam, which is uh, it's called porcelain. Porcelain, yeah. So, OK, the green one's called hazel and it's the only one that comes with black bezels. And then there's porcelain, which has white bezels and is sort of like this more porcelain color, I guess. And then there's a rose, which is like slightly pink. It's like the Pixel 3 sand pink in a way also has white bezels so if you're like in a living room you probably want to get the hazel but i'm assuming that most of these are in people's like kitchens so you yeah. get any of the other colors you have a white bezel yeah 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 white bezel's fine in the kitchen also yeah. the case i don't do we know if the case comes with this or i don't think i don't it think it does okay well it's still really cool sick because the case can fit on the back match the color and it has this interesting like metal oval that when you take it off of the the speaker, now you have a kickstand. So if yeah. you want to go on the plane or whatever and kick it up, or if you want to distract your kids at dinner because they're being noisy, you can kick it up on the table. But then it can fold back in and then still snap right onto the home. It like doesn't affect the so pogo cool. pins at all. I, I really like really that. Really sweet. It's clever. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, the two hundred and fifty six gigabyte is one hundred dollars more, so it's five ninety nine instead of four ninety nine, which is pretty nice. Uh, I'm trying to look for accessories. I don't really know if they're selling. They're not. They haven't. They showed the accessories, but I don't think they 
are selling them yet. They'll probably sell them when they a couple when of it comes them are out. Live on Google Store. Really, there's I'm like looking the, right now. There's the case, oh, it's probably the accessory the section. Yeah, it's in the accessory section. Okay. Because I was looking to see if they sold the hub yet, and the hub is coming soon. It says it's not for sale yet. If you want to buy a separate one, the dock. Okay. okay. Yeah, okay. The dock. Yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah. there's still. I, yeah, I do think that a separate. I guess if you really like to carry the tablet around with you all day, if you have one oh like my God. by your bed and in the living room, then maybe you would get two of them. But that just feels. I think those are the two, like the, the kitchen, somewhere downstairs, somewhere upstairs, basically, like the bedroom and the kitchen or something. Yeah, if you want to bring them before, I would hate to just leave it without a tablet out there. I think that would look kind of weird. So the official case is $80. Which the seems one with like, the wire? Yeah. That yeah. one's $80. $80. And then there's a spec um made standy shell is what they call it which is basically like it has a kickstand built in and that's 50. that looks it's a totally different color and it looks, it looks like terrible. it affects the pins the well. official case the cases are the same color as mm -hmm. the body so it looks exactly the same basically um and then it has the metal ring 80 dollars seems kind of steep it does seem kind of steep i will say but the guy in front of me when we were watching the thing he was like taking notes or whatever and then he looked up at the end and he looked back at us he was like there's no keyboard I was like, no, there's no keyboard. And he was like, oof, ouch. And Did, started writing about how bad that was. But how was are you like, gonna, I don't think this is a tablet people are going to put. Yeah, a, you're not going to you? carry a separate keyboard with you when it's mostly on the dock. Yeah. That's I, I think this is the people who put a, a tablet on a keyboard are suddenly like a high performance. Like yeah, this is yeah. media are consumption. Not buying this tablet. This is so, media I, consumption. Yeah. This is entertainment purposes when you're using it in tablet mode. And yeah. they did. To be fair, they also do mention how Google has some of the best voice to text translate. So like there's not a lot. There is the split screen keyboard, but like most of the time you're going to want to put text on this thing. You're just going to use your voice. Facts. <laughs>